Scott Sancho. But first, we're going to talk about pot. State Rep uh, Casey Weinstein wants to help legalize marijuana in Ohio, uh, representing uh, the state of Ohio's 37th House District. Uh, Representative Weinstein, great to have you on the show. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it, Scott. What what a, a follow on those. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, a a busy day on the show for sure. Yeah, we're 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 having a good time, man. And by the way, this conversation will be on Zoom on our website at wspd.com. If my my chair keeps sinking down below the camera line, I noticed on Zoom. So uh, we'll try to edit that out later. Maybe you can sink down a little bit yourself. Just make us look on far. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so what what's the deal behind this? We. I thought we had legalized marijuana in Ohio, but it's it was really done kind of half-assed. Yeah, well, that's one way to put it. It's uh, we have a limited marijuana uh, medical marijuana program in Ohio, so that's where things stand as of today. Um, it's been rolled out. Uh, by the way, there's once you start working in marijuana, there's a lot of puns. You realize there's just a lot yes. of puns. Yep. So <laughs> uh, it's been rolled out over the last couple of years. And uh, it's been successful. And that's one of the reasons why I think it's time to expand. It's, it's, it was highly regulated. Uh, you know, we, we kind of hamstrung the medical marijuana operators, uh, dispensaries and growers. Uh, and they're, they're kind of being successful despite our best efforts, I think, in that program in a lot of ways. So uh, again, one of the reasons why I think Ohio is ready to take the next step, um, w- that program is being expanded. But there is a massive demand out there as we're seeing from neighboring states for, you know, recreational marijuana. And I, I just think the time is now to move on it. Yeah. So how successful has the program been, or do you know, is there a way to quantify how successful the medical marijuana program has been? I know speaking as, as someone who has no problem legalizing marijuana, either for medicinal or recreational use, it, it doesn't seem like it's been in a, as effective a rollout in Ohio as we've seen in other states, Michigan comes to mind immediately right away, but but obviously there are a dozen other states that have done a more successful rollout. I couldn't tell you what the process would be to get uh, approved for medical marijuana in Ohio. I wouldn't know where to go to get it if I was approved, and I wouldn't know how much it would cost. Exactly. Um, so the the problem is, you know, the conditions that are covered are are fairly limited. Uh, the dispensary locations are extremely limited. The number of growers is limited. So right now, what we've got is, um, you know, this is a, a Democrat here saying this, but we're, you know, overly regulated, essentially, right. uh, regulated into uh, the fact that they they cannot meet demand even in the me- in the medical space today. So to answer your question, Scott, it's been a successful program, but it's really kind of with one arm behind its back. The the um, if you're if you're somebody yeah. suffering from migraines or glaucoma or if you've got cancer, you're in constant, pe- uh, constant pain. It, it's still easier for you to get marijuana on the street than it would be to get uh, a prescription and go get it from a dispensary. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair to say. I, you know, I just I've heard from a lot of folks um, who you know can't afford or can't get to a dispensary location. There's a lot of Ohioans that are more than 200, 250 miles away from one right now. Uh, that's one of the things that's really, it's uh, it's like a choke point, essentially, in um, in how the medical marijuana program is rolled out, is the number of dispensaries and retail locations reaching people. And then again, the the limiting number of conditions that qualify for the program in the first place. So, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I go back to saying it's been, it's been successful despite the extreme limitations that have been put on it. Uh, and then if you look at polling, people really are ready, and this is a bipartisan issue, uh, people are really ready for, you know, full recreation and the ability to, to have, um, you know, just, just uh, to do this. That, although we would continue the medical program and expand it too under my bill. You know, it's, it, it's interesting because uh, obviously uh, Governor DeWine and the attorney generals uh, over the last eight years have been opposed to any sort of marijuana legalization. And then when the money came into it, when, when these big uh, marijuana grow companies uh, got their lobby money behind it. It seems like, and, and this is coming from a Republican who's saying, it seems like once the money got involved, uh, the the reps who are in control of the state house realized, you know what, we can we can take their money, we can do what they want to do, and and help these major companies out in the state of Ohio if we've got to legalize it, uh, but we don't have to do it all the way, and that seems to be a lot of the problem there. The, there's been fits and starts, right, in that constitutional. I think you're talking about the. Um the constitutional amendment that right. went to a ballot issue. 
definitely a flawed uh, a flawed program that did not expand the benefits to everybody that that um, that should. And in my bill, we're talking about expanding. There's a criminal justice angle. Um, you know, there's a which is needed. It absolutely is. There's over twenty thousand arrests a year um, in Ohio for nonviolent, low-level pos- marijuana possession, which really kind of blows your mind. So, whether you're coming at this from maybe a li- more libertarian angle of Look, we could keep people out of jail. I mean, we're, spend, we're spending so much money on the prison industrial complex in the state or from a law enforcement angle saying, hey, let's free up law enforcement to focus on violent crime, uh, right? There's a win, I think, on both sides here. Um, or, or even more dangerous drugs like the opioid crisis, like fentanyl that's coming in. Okay, and, I, I'm, and look, uh, uh, state rep uh, Casey Weinstein here on the Scott Sancho. I'm a, a former addict. I was addicted to cocaine for a long period of time, but I, I don't see any difference in the use of recreational marijuana and the use of recreational beer, wine, and liquor. It, it's essentially the same thing. And the, the revenue that it could bring into the state uh, far outweighs any, any risks, in my opinion. I, I couldn't agree more, Scott. And if you look at, and the, by the way, that's how we structured the bill. Uh, I was looking at best practices from Illinois and Michigan and, and Colorado and some of the other states that have moved ahead of us. What we, what we do is there's a 10% excise tax and that the funds go right back into the communities where the retail locations and the growers are, or so the, in this case, the retail locations. So they're going to K-12 schools, they're going to infrastructure, uh, they're going to veterans PTSD programs to fight addiction, things like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's hundreds of millions of dollars that have the potential to get pumped right back into Ohio. I was actually at a conference last week and and one of my uh, colleagues from Washington State, where they have a program that's a couple years old now, said they had $1.3 billion in excise taxes that were returned to local communities through their program. It's just a great way to, um, to get dollars to the, you know, to the local governments where they're most effectively used in a lot of cases. Now, as you're talking about the money going back to local communities and schools, will it be, is it using air quotes the same way that lottery money has made it back to schools? No, this is specifically drafted in the bill, and we are we're in final review for the bill. The bill has not been filed yet, but we expect to this week. So it is specifically outlined in the bill percentages of revenues uh, that go directly back into governments in in those specific buckets of K twelve education, veterans programs, uh, and infrastructure, specifically roads, bridges, and water programs. So uh, that's we we're very careful about that, very deliberate. So <laughs> let, let's. let's- Let's look at, uh, at this on a, on a national level. You talk about the popularity of the, the concept of legalizing marijuana. There are, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, 37 states now that have in some way legalized a, a form of marijuana use. And I, I don't know what the number is for recreational use offhand, but it's got to be close to a couple of dozen at this point. We, so I, um, that's the number I've got too, 37 uh, of either starting with med- uh, medical marijuana working up through decriminalization and then full recreation. Um, so yeah, and, and we're reaching a tipping point where the majority, soon the majority of, Mer- of Americans will live in decriminalized states. So from a federal perspective, I, I know there's bipartisan support in both houses for uh, decriminalization or full legalization. And I'm hoping that my bill uh, adds to that critical mass that we need to build for the federal government to take action, which is the ultimate end game on this thing. Do you have any Republican support of the state house? We just went out for co-sponsorship last week. So we are uh, my joint oh, sponsor. Uh, again. That sounds like a no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we honestly might, I, I have not looked at the co-sponsor list, but I can tell you there is support across the aisle, whether or not they're willing to sign their name to the bill. Uh, we'll find out. This is sort of a forcing function to say, okay, well, it, you know, we're, we're due. We, it's time we catch up with where the Ohio public is uh, and uh, and do the right thing in terms of moving this forward. So we'll, we'll be working at this over the next couple of weeks to, to make it a bipartisan bill. I've, I've been told there's uh, efforts on the other side of the aisle to to put forward a bill too. So I'm, I'm fine. I don't, I don't care you know whose bill it is. I just want to see this happen for the state of Ohio. I, I think it's time. And I, I think there are so many other more dangerous drugs that, that we need to be worried about in the state of Ohio that we could concentrate law enforcement efforts on and addiction efforts on, uh, that marijuana has been proven to have uh, many of the same effects as, as beer, wine, liquor. I, I think it's hypocritical to, to have marijuana illegal and beer, wine, liquor is, is not. And the revenue that uh, could, could be generated for the state and for local levels, I, I think is substantial enough that it needs to be examined. Uh, 
Uh, and I, I think the, the criminal justice reform aspect of this is, is worth exploring as well. We have far too many people in jail for nonviolent marijuana offenses that are taking up space in already overcrowded jails and also costing taxpayer dollars. I, there, this, I don't understand why this is not an issue that Republicans will not get behind. It, 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 may, it shows me in many ways, and I'm going to talk about this in a little while, actually, how, how fractured the Republican Party has become and, and out of touch with, with the, the, their constituents on many opinions. And there are a lot of people listening to me right now throwing stuff at the radio as I say that who disagree. I get that. It's not for everybody, but for a majority of the state, they're moving in that direction. They are, Scott. And, you know, I, I urge my Republican colleagues to pull their constituents because I've put this out there uh, and have received, I mean, overwhelming support uh, uh, for it. Again, across the aisle. Um, it's actually the most engaged Facebook post I've ever put out <laughs> on my page. And if you look at the statistics on it, it's, 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 uh, it's nuts. Um, in terms of uh, bipartisan support, I've got Republicans lighting up my page uh, in support, which is not something that always happens on my post. Right. So well, not, in, is, not in a good way. Not in a good way, right? No, but I, you know, I'm in a purple district uh, here in, uh, in Northeast Summit County. So I, you know, I, I feel like I'm you know, maybe the right representative of, of a district like mine to, to try to represent a, a bipartisan push forward on this. And I think, um, I think the critical mass is there. The numbers I mentioned earlier, it's 70%. It's over 70% support now. And, and this thing has moved very rapidly. So what I'm concerned about, Scott, is that Ohio is gonna fall behind because Michigan has moved out and so has Illinois. And, and they're making a lot of money. I, I could I could tell you that the, I, I'm not going to narc on anybody, but I could tell you dozens of people who make the trek from Toledo across the state line to Michigan to get their pot. I mean, it, it, which is which is illegal in many, many ways, but it's happening. It's already happening. And the same thing in, in other parts of the state, too. Right. And, you know, the reality is people are are smoking illegally in Ohio, too. And it's, you know, and it's really it's time you don't say re re regulated. Uh, tax it, uh, um, create jobs. By the way, the, the folks who um, are currently have a, a record for, again, nonviolent low-level possession, which is uh, less than five ounces on, on personal possession, would have their record sealed and have an opportunity to get involved in this industry. Um, you know, population- well, they, they would know it well, so yeah. Right, populations that have historically um, taken the, a disproportionate hit, as you mentioned uh, quite accurately, uh, now we'll have an opportunity to reap the benefit, the economic gains of uh, of this. So, you know, I, I think in Ohio we should uh, we should open ourselves up to every kind of economic opportunity, as long as it's not going to hurt anybody else, as long as it's not hurting people. Uh, and what we've done in Ohio is we've waited waited and seen how this has played out across the country. I think uh, in my bill we spent months looking at best practices, talking to industry, talking to communities. Uh, talking to law enforcement about this to get this right. And I think we've crafted a good, a good bill rather than going the constitutional amendment route, which by the way, could be coming too. I'd rather see it go through legislation, which is more right. of a scalpel um, than a sledgehammer. So let's, let's do it. State Rep. Casey Weinstein. Uh, let's follow the bill. And, and I'd love to have you on the show more often so we can uh, update everybody on the status of this bill. Hopefully you'll get uh, support from across the aisle and we'll see if this thing moves through the legislature. Anytime, Scott. I appreciate you uh, amplifying the message. Look, don't screw this up like you did the the, the sports gambling laws. <laughs> yeah, that was just uh, that wasn't my bill, but yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you agree with me though, right? <laughs> well, uh, that you know, I'm told don't we're going to take another whack at that this fall. I'm told we're going to totally screw it. that up. There, yeah, um, we need to legalize pot and gambling. Let's let's get all those laws out of the way. All right, let's just. Hey, I'm on board on both of those on both of those fronts. Just to be clear, so uh, let's. Uh, we're ready to move this fall on both on both fronts. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Scott. Take care.